Hello, my name is Russell Myers. Welcome to Issues Unite. All right, so uh, we all know about the uh, sanctions that are being placed on Russia and what the intent is to isolate Russia economically, etc. Uh, the thing that uh, Western media is not going to tell you is that uh, the ultimate fact is that 80% of the countries globally are not sanctioning Russia. So you, know, you hear about the countries that are sanctioning Russia, but you don't hear about how many countries are not sanctioning Russia. Um, yeah, the U.S. is now threatening China because China refuses to uh, jump on board and, and thinks that these uh, sanctions should end. Uh, something to keep in mind is that the United States is currently sanctioning uh, roughly 20 countries. Uh, you know, we've got over 80 sanctions that I know of uh, imposed on at least 20 countries. So countries that are not sanctioning Russia, and many, many of whom, well, I, I'd say all of whom, are, be, are under U.S. sanction. Uh, China, uh, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Venezuela. Uh, <laughs> that meeting with Maduro did not go as Biden was planning. Um, you know, they I, I did not agree to uh, what the U.S. was proposing, especially with the timing of it. Um, you know, the fact is, okay, now, and now there is, a, excuse me, discussion that uh, Russia may default on some debts. I, I think most of this is corporate debt. Well, all these corporations pulling out, and most of those countries, most of those companies that are pulling out of uh, Russia, <laughs> Russia's better off without who? Uh, Coke, Pepsi, McDonald's. Uh, it's just going to make the Russian people healthier in the long term. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, they've removed Russia from the SWIFT system. So now they're so now there's the talk about Russia defaulting on debt, um, you know, and Russia has said we can pay our debts, but we're going to pay you in rubles. Well, I, 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 no, and some, uh, you know, lenders are are, are saying, uh, no, we want to be paid in dollars, and Russia Russia's not going to buy U.S. dollars while the U.S. is is sanctioning them and leading this war charge on them, that ain't going to happen. Russia's good for their debt, um, you know, as opposed to the United States. In 2017, Russia paid off the last of their national debt. All countries have a rolling debt, uh, which is just a part of normal operations. Uh, you have a rolling debt uh, all the time. Uh, you know, you can say that you don't have any debts, but as you're sitting there, uh, you know, you're racking up charges uh, for your utility bills and, and your water, you know, your electricity, your water, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, so you've always got a rolling debt as well. And, and so Russia always has a rolling debt, but their national debt they paid off in 2017, which included residual debt from the USSR. Uh, I want to look something up here. Okay, so in uh, 2021, Russia's debt to GDP was uh, less than uh, 18%, which was a decline from 2020, uh, where 2020 was 1.3% higher. And 
so it was 19.24%. In 2019, their debt to GDP was less than 14%. By comparison, right now, our debt to GDP is, is uh, estimated at 135%. Uh, while oil prices are up this high, with Russia still being one of the world's leading oil exporters, well, you know, Russia's making a lot of money off of their oil sales. So, yeah, they're good for their debt, as opposed to the United States. People are talking about the devaluation of the ruble. Well, that's still not going to make them buy dollars to pay their debts. You're not going to force them to do that, period. Um, you know, Russia cut off from, banks cut off from the SWIFT system. Okay, so they made an arrangement with China, and, and I mean, this happened in a matter of two or three days. Russia and China are building up an alternative to the SWIFT system. This has been going on for a while, and this system is growing. The more countries that are under U.S. sanction, the more of these countries that are going to sign on to this alternative system. The, str the stronger the sanctions become, the stronger this alternative payment system is going to become. What does that mean? That means that we have now got, uh, and, and we've increasingly got, two different economic systems globally. And rather than isolating Russia and China and these other countries, what the United States uh, and, and the West is winding up doing is isolating themselves. Because the countries that are not going to engage in these sanctions, uh, you look at it, it, it is a split. The only countries really yeah, engaged in this are, are basically in the global northwest. The United States, Canada, uh, Mexico's not taking part in it. They're not going to. Uh, you know, the European Union, but even they are not going to uh, embargo oil and gas from Russia. And eventually, I, I've covered before, they're going to wind up buying uh, grain from, uh, to import from Russia uh, and probably from Ukraine. Um, you know, so the Middle East, even Israel is not going to sanction Russia economically. So the entire Middle East is refusing to engage in these sanctions. Um, Africa, most of Africa, not going to do it. Um, you know, South America, Mexico and South America, not going to do it. So, you look at, if you put all this on a map, it's mostly the North and West. The only countries in the East that are engaging in this are U.S. puppet states. Um, you know, look at Australia and the flooding they've got going on right now. They're, I mean, they've embargoed uh, coal from China. Uh, they're crops uh, for, for the time being have been destroyed by floods. Last year they, they had a plague of mice. Uh, so uh, yeah, go ahead, sanction Russia and China and, and whatever. Uh, Japan, which is, uh, uh, Japan has just gotten stupid. Uh, I, I used to give them credit for some intelligence, but they've just gotten completely stupid 
in the last few years. Uh, South Korea, and, and you look at, if you look at it, South Korea, every single president for about the last 20 or 30 years has, after they leave office, has been uh, investigated and or convicted of corruption in South Korea. Um, yeah, I mean, Vietnam's not going to sanction them. Um, so so uh, they're trying to count, still trying to count Taiwan as a country. Taiwan is still part of China, like it or not. I don't care if you like it. It's still the truth. So, you know, uh, there's a big fight going on about, um, you know, microchips now. Well, certain elements that come from Russia are included in every microprocessor on the planet. Um, so, and then you're, you're fighting with China as well. What's going to wind up happening here? They say that, uh, you know, uh, Russia and China need software from the United States. And I don't think that's true at all. I'm pretty sure that they can write their own software. Uh, <laughs> So you're going, what we're going to wind up seeing is technological advances in the East and countries that are not engaging in these sanctions. You're going to see a increased trade among all these countries. Russia and China, China have increased trade among each other. You got Kazakhstan, you've got India, who is not going, not engaging in the sanctions, uh, you know, all of, all these different countries, Iran, and Iraq and Syria, and on and on and on, they are increasing trade with each other, which is isolating the United States and the European Union. In other words, all of NATO. So. They, you know, they're all they're shooting themselves in the foot at every turn. What this is going to wind up doing is devaluing the dollar. If there is another country, if there is another alternative payment system, the value of the dollar is only propped up by comparison with other currencies. Well, if you remove those currencies from the circulation, you're comparing the dollar to stronger currencies, which means the value of the dollar drops. Okay? That, that's the way that is going to work. And if you want to cross over payment systems between one system and another, then it's probably going to have to be with hard assets. Gold, silver, oil, name it. Or there's going to have to be one single international currency which no country can control and use as a weapon like the United States is doing. If you have one international currency that nobody's got control over, then sanctions cease to have any effect at all. So, we're going to have to wait and see how this plays out, but I am absolutely expecting that this is going to strengthen the uh, system that Russia and China have built up. All right, share this video. Talk about these subjects. If you can, please donate a dollar a month to help expand the channel, and I will catch you in the next one.